Hey, welcome back. It's Nolan with Ice Market360, and today we're discussing an article out of Bloomberg Nanos that says that half of Canadians want to see interest rates go up so that housing prices go down, which is absolutely absurd, and I'll tell you why after the intro. But before we get into it, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video, and don't forget about our race to 25,000 subscribers, where one lucky subscriber is going to win $5,000 to put towards their TFSA, their RESP, their RRSP, or I guess now that I think about it, even their mortgage if they would like. All you have to do is be subscribed to this channel. It's free, it's easy, and it's definitely worth it, so go ahead, click that subscribe button. The definitive of guide on how to manage your credit product penalty price in that order it's never been more important to get your mortgage right okay so let's get into it let's discuss the fact that 50 percent of canadians want housing prices to go down by virtue of interest rates going up and this is the economic equivalent of saying i want gas prices to double so that the prices of cars come down and you know what happens when gas prices increase just ask all the people in eastern canada and in the southern united states right now in northeastern united states what happens when gas prices increases do the price of cars actually come down no they don't they stay the same. It just gets more freaking expensive to own a car. That's it. And I'm going to jump right in here and I'm going to show you the news release, the article. You can find this on both the Financial Post and on BNN Bloomberg. Freaked out Canadians open to rate hikes to cool the hot housing market. And, you know, this is just, again, absolutely absurd because here's the deal. As interest rates go up, it gets more expensive to own the house. And as it gets more expensive to own the house, it doesn't matter if the value comes down because you're essentially paying the same for it anyways. And near the end of this video, I'm going to show you exactly what the numbers look like and why you don't actually want interest rates to increase. So, you know, I'm going to jump right into the report here. I want you to take a look at this because they asked two questions here. The first question was, on a scale of zero to 10, where zero is not a problem and 10 is a major problem, how would you rate rising home prices and the impact on the Canadian economy? Well, most people rank this as a seven to 10, which meant it was a major problem in the economy or something that they foresaw as a major problem in the economy. So interesting question there, right? Well, the follow-up question to that was, would you support some or somewhat support the Bank of Canada increasing interest rates to help slow down the rising home prices? And if you look at who, the people who answered support or somewhat support, 49% of Canadians answered yes. Now, there's a problem with this, and it's a significant problem. It's if you ask people questions in a certain order, it often changes the result that you get on the second question. So in this case, you ask people, do you think increasing housing prices is a problem? And they say yes. And then you say, would you support the Bank of Canada increasing interest rates? And they say, yes, absolutely, because that'll solve the problem that you asked me about. Whereas if they just asked the first question or the second question independently of itself, which is, do you think that the Bank of Canada should increase interest rates? You're probably going to get a totally different answer. So whenever somebody's doing surveys, you have to be really, really careful about the order of questions that you ask and specifically how you ask them. I'm going to tell you a story right now about our golf course. Our golf course at the moment has reduced tee times to 10 minutes. Now, I know guys in Ontario are going, I don't feel sorry for you because we can't golf at all at the moment, but let just bear with me in the example here. So last year during the pandemic, they reduced the, the amount of time between tee times to 10 minutes. And they did this so that there was less traffic and less potential to cr for crossover. So there was less potential for people to catch COVID when they were getting onto the first tee. So at the end of the year, they do a survey. And in that survey, in the context of COVID, they ask, what did you think of 10 minute tee times? And regardless of, of what they said here, people are thinking last year, they we had 10 minute tee times and that was good because it reduced my risk of catching COVID. And so therefore people almost unanimously answered, I agreed with it, I thought it was great. Well, now here we come to 2021, there's less chances of catching COVID in the outdoors. And we now know that because the studies are there, the evidence is there to prove it. And they decide that they are going to maintain 10 minute tea times. And the reason why they're maintaining 10 minute tea times is because they got comments last year that said that 10 minute tea times were really good and that 
in the survey that they put out over the winter, 10 minute tea times were, were something that the memberships unequivocally, or that the membership unequivocally supported. And it's like, well, hold on a second. No, they didn't necessarily support it because what they thought was they thought you were asking about how you handled COVID, not necessarily what they thought of 10 minute tea times, because here's what happens with 10 minute versus eight minute tea times is 10 minute tea times is essentially a 20% reduction in the amount of available places to play or the available opportunity to play. So if they had said in that survey, rather than what do you think of 10 minute tea times, if they had said, going forward, do you think that we should have 10 minute tea times, even though the risk of catching COVID is not as high, and that would result in a 20% reduction in the amount of available playing times, would you support this? And of course, the answer is going to be totally different. So in this survey with Nanos, you're basically finding yourself in a similar situation where they're asking one question, then another. And I'm not sure if they actually asked them in this order, but I assume that they did based on the way that they presented them in their report. And therefore that skews the second answer. Now, here's the thing though, you need to be really, really careful about what you wish for. Because if you are thinking that the Bank of Canada increasing interest rates is going to bring the market down and that's a good thing, you could be very, very, very much wrong. And here's why. So we've talked previously about the 1%, 10% rule. And the 1%, 10% rule is that for every 1% increase in interest rates, buying power comes down by about 10%. Okay, so let's say in theory, half of Canadians support interest rates going up, the Bank of Canada moving interest rates up, and let's say that this all pans out the way people expect and housing prices come down by 10% after they put an, a 1% increase to the interest rates. So we're gonna adjust housing prices by 10% here, and we are going to make it $675 thousand dollars and what we're going to do is we're going to increase the interest rate to 2.45 percent now look at what has happened to the total interest rate that you would pay for this mortgage basically you've decreased the value of houses by increasing interest rates by one percent you've decreased the value of houses by ten percent but your interest costs have gone up by eighty two thousand nine hundred seventy six dollars which is a little bit more than the 10% that you've reduced the values by. So therefore, you're asking for the Bank of Canada to increase interest rates so property values go down, but you're actually increasing the cost of borrowing, and therefore you're actually increasing the value of the property because the extra interest that you are going to pay ends up actually being more than the reduction in the value prices. And going back to our gas analogy, guess what happens when you increase interest rates? Do property values actually come down significantly? No, people's buying power comes down, but the actual reduction in prices rarely happens. So in effect, if the Bank of Canada were to increase interest rates in order to cool the housing market, we're probably not going to see a decrease in home values, we're probably going to see home values stay pretty much where they are. And we're also going to have added interest rate costs, which means we're going to pay more over the lifetime of our mortgage for that actual property. So be very, very careful about what you wish for, because not only are you wishing for higher interest costs and therefore to pay more for a house, but you're also wishing for a slowdown in the economy, less jobs, and basically an overall less positive financial picture. So, you know, it's one of those things where, yeah, I get if you don't own a home, you're hoping interest rates go up so that housing prices comes down. That isn't the way that it works. That isn't what's going to happen if they increase interest rates. Housing prices are going to slow in their growth, but they probably aren't going to come down substantially. And I get that if you're in a five-year fix, you're going, yeah, raise rates, but I don't care. It's, I'm locked in for five years. Well, you also need to think about what happens at renewal when all of a sudden you have to pay a higher interest rate and your payments jump pretty much overnight by 20 to 30 to 40 percent. So higher interest rates is not something that anybody should be hoping for. Now, the good news here, and I, I think this is good news from a perspective of what's probably going to happen with interest rates over the long term, is... The good news is we probably aren't going to see a run up in interest rates or a significant run up in interest rates anytime soon. We've got uh, David Rosenberg who has is talking this week about inflation likely being transitory. He's he's basically agreeing with uh, the Federal Reserve in the US's uh, chairman Jerome Powell stating that, you know, there's going to be inflation in the short term, but as soon as that transitory inflation starts to peter out of the economy, probably in the fall or winter, there is 
a high likelihood that even though they're pumping money into the economy, we're probably going to see further deflationary uh, pressure as the effects of people still not having jobs and and incentivizations and government subsidies basically coming out of the woodworks, as well as deferrals on mortgage payments and everything drying up that way. So this is really, really interesting. Um, he's basically saying, you know, there could be a deflationary effect, not an inflationary effect, even though the government keeps pumping money into the economy. And another interesting thing to note here, I'm not sure if I can find it real quickly on my screen, but uh, there's also a report that came out just at the time of filming this that um, that bankruptcies are up by 23% uh, amongst Canadians this month, which means that that further fuels the negative impact on the Canadian economy and further indicates that we're probably going to see low interest rates for a significantly longer period of time than what a lot of people are expecting. So, you know, first and foremost, if the Federal Reserve doesn't move interest rates until 2023, the Bank of Canada sure as heck won't be moving interest rates because to do so would basically kill our economy and our export economy. And, you know, there's talk now about the U.S. not raising interest rates until 2024. And if it takes that long for them to do it, you can rest assured that the Bank of Canada is pretty much going to have to follow suit. And we could be in a low interest rate environment for significantly longer than anybody expected. But again, be careful what you wish for. Higher interest rates is not something that anybody wants right now. It'll increase the cost of borrowing. It'll cost people jobs. It'll cost the growth in the economy. And ultimately, it'll end up costing you significantly significantly more for your house than what you ever expected. And it sure as heck isn't going to cause a decrease in home values and subsequently a lower overall cost for your homes. So if you found this video useful and you're in the market for a mortgage and you're in the market for the lowest interest rate possible, um, we understand that not everybody wants to come to Mortgage 360 to get their mortgage. If you do, there's a link in the description below. If you don't, however, there is a course that I've created called Secrets to Getting the Lowest Interest Rate. It is designed specifically so that people who are looking for the interest, lowest interest rate can understand exactly how to negotiate with their bank, how to negotiate with a broker, how to get the absolute lowest rate and what you can include, what you can negotiate into those low rate conversations. And ultimately, how much margin there is available in a mortgage and what the landmines and surprises are that are associated with getting the absolute lowest rate. We've priced that course so low that is pretty much accessible to anybody who is looking to get into the housing market or get a mortgage. Um, we expect that most people will get 10 to 50 times their investment back on that product. And so far, the reviews have been really good. So if you want to get that course, we put a, we put a coupon code in the description below for 50% off the already discounted price. And I would be happy to have you join us in that course. And Further, if you found this video useful, do me that favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and please hit that like button so more people like you can see this video. And don't forget about our race to 25,000 subscribers. We'll see you on the next video.